What's up traders, Sandra O'Connell with Pristine Capital coming at you with yet another market recap video. It is August 12th, 2021. Hope everyone had a great trading day. Today we're going to go through the price action, the indices, we'll go through some of my trades for today. We're also going to talk about if you're getting chopped up in this market, you know, some good ways to you know prevent that chopping and really just a good way to get through this choppy August month. So let's jump into it. Quick first disclaimer before we jump into the video, nothing in this video should be construed as investment advice or recommendations. Please follow your own trading plan and your own risk parameters. And last but certainly not least, do not YOLO your entire account into any one of my trades or any one of anyone's trades. All right, so box scores for today's session. We had the S&P 500 finish up 0.3%. We have the NASDAQ QQQ finish up 0.36%. We have the IWM small caps which were our big loser for today, finished down 0.24%. And we had the Dow Jones close up 0.08%. So for today's session, you know, look at this S&P 500. Look at this, beautiful. We closed at a new all-time high. We closed right at the top of the range. You know, great candle, great day, right? On the surface, it might look like that. But today's trading was actually you know, a lot of push pull going on. When we started off the day, the markets were very weak. The S&P 500 was red at one point, and then we just kind of chopped around. And like the rest of August has been, we just chop around a little bit. You can see there's a pullback right here in the pre-market, but then we end up resolving higher because there's just a lack of sellers in the marketplace. We ended up tagging this R2 pivot level on the weekly chart. And now we're trading, you know, well above that R2 pivot level. So yeah, we're, you know, at this point, a little bit extended to the upside. That's okay. But yeah, today, like I definitely noticed, like I was in a Twitter space yesterday. Uh, and I noticed there were a lot of traders that were very frustrated. And I think it's just something where like even today that frustration continues. NASDAQ up 0.4%. And this one found support at that 20 day simple moving average. It actually undercut it in the morning and it looked like, well, you know, this could be a bad day. And then, you know, we ended up resolving higher. And the market is definitely climbing a wall of worry. And what I mean by that is almost every day, there's reasons to become very bearish. So it's like, you know, hedge funds are very concentrated. These are a couple of things I was looking at this morning. Hedge funds, you know, they're very concentrated in certain stocks. We have the Fed taper coming up. You know, the economy may or may not be slowing down or may or may not be speeding up. You know, there's just a lot of different reasons to get cautious on the market. And then the market will have its little shakeout in the morning. And it just kind of resolves higher by the end of the day. Like small caps, for instance, closed down, you know, 0.24%, which in the grand scheme is not that much at all. At one point, this was down as much as I believe like 0.7%. So yeah, small caps are just continuing to grind their way higher, but almost every day is, you know, a battle between the bulls and the bears, but we just continue to ride that five day EMA higher. Dow Jones closing up 0.17%. This one also, you know, had the nice breakout and is continuing that run. We have this R1 pivot up here at 35,523. So let's go a little bit deeper. And I think this is why today could have been a very frustrating day, depending on what you were trading. So market breadth was very weak. And in the morning, market breadth was horrible. It was like 29% advancers in the S&P 500. It was like, you know, 20% advancers in the Dow. It was horrible. But we ended up resolving higher. But funny enough, so think about that. You saw that candle in the S&P 500? Oh, where was it? Yeah, you know, this candle, if you were just like, oh, how'd the market do today, hun? You know, you'd be like, yeah, the market did pretty well, up 0.35%, closed right on the high. But most of the stocks in the market, you know, they were not doing well. So even though the market, you know, closed higher, today we had a sell-off in the market. And it sounds really weird, right? It's like, you know, the market was up. It's like, no, it actually wasn't. The market sold off today. And you know, the, the real reason why you can have that discrepancy is because there's a few companies in the S&P 500 that have huge weights in the index because it's a market cap weighted index. 
and those names if they're moving up they can really push the market higher so if you feel like you know i'm getting chopped up you know my portfolio is down today and the market was up i would just take solace in the fact that you know pretty much everyone that is an active trader is facing this same tough environment and you know depending on which areas of the market you're in it actually makes sense why maybe you drag behind the index that being said you know it's it's not like i'm giving you an excuse to you know cry or anything like that you know when you're a trader you really just have to reiterate on what you're doing see what you're doing incorrectly and you know try to make some adjustments and yeah you can see apple was up 2.08 percent today tesla was up two percent we had google up microsoft up amazon up so yeah when you have these big names these fang names that are moving higher it does not matter what the rest of the market is doing literally like these five names they can pull the entire market we had a big sell-off in semiconductors i know a lot of players they're probably pretty overweight semis software which was very weak the past two days bounced so maybe you saw the weakness last two days and you went okay these are showing relative weakness you bounced out i i bounced out of my software names you know a while ago but yeah maybe you saw that and you bounced down and then all of a sudden you look today and you're like what my software names you know now they're up so there's a lot of push pull going on in the market sectors uh, sector map you know turned nice and green throughout the day but at one point this was you know really bloody blockchain assets which are top leader were down 2.77 percent uh ethereum and bitcoin had you know pretty sizable pullbacks today and then we had kweb down three percent we had gold miners down gold miners were very strong yesterday what else did we have yeah retail was down let's see some of the leaders we had healthcare which was a leader up 0.79 percent software and that was about it and i see this like arc is real fund uh, so yeah, it was pretty much like the defensive areas of the market that were leading. And yeah, you can see right here, growth was a leader in terms of style factors up 0.52%. And that was our big winner. So yeah, the growth stocks did very well. What was the second best? And yeah, the second best were defensives. So yeah, it can get very confusing. Like for these rotations, you know, from growth to value, reflation to deflation, if you're not catching them early, you know you can really get whips on so i would keep in mind you know this is a more difficult trading environment just because we're getting these you know rapid rotations but you should be finding a way to you know win in this environment i'm just going to go through my trades real quick we will talk about you know some ways of you know making some improvements to your trading game and you know when you're going through like a rough patch like typically most august they are very choppy like this you know just some things you can do to keep yourself in the game so let's see uh so we'll go through uh we'll go through my options first my options so i had a spill this morning so this morning the market looked very weak and what i've been doing is like if the market looks like it's going to break down i will buy some puts as a hedge but then what's been happening lately is you know you buy the puts and then we just have this mean reversion movement within the price action and then boom you know the market's just ripping higher so i've been trying to just take very tight stops so i put on some september q's puts took a very tight stop got out of those excuse me for 732 i paid 770. i gave it a second shot because it really looked like you know maybe this thing is going to go down i entered some puts for 476. i pushed out of those for 445 and i said someone big is buying up the nasdaq just below support so what i mean by that is let's take a look i pretty much shorted nasdaq into the lows of the day that's kind of funny it's actually like kind of embarrassing in a way but i just learned like as a trader you know there's no room for embarrassment there's no room for anything like that just because as a trader you're always playing the probabilities you're playing the odds and you know if you have like a 51 percent edge on something there's going to be you know a lot of times where you have a little edge trade the edge that just doesn't work out and that's okay so that's that's what i'm here to show you today so i pretty much shorted the cues right as we were breaking below this weekly value area and i was like okay you know we're breaking down you know that means 
you know, we could really spill to the downside. Going to this five minute chart, this is our daily value area. I started shorting, you know, into this when we started breaking down below this daily value area. So I put on some Q's puts. As soon as we start pushing back in here, I took those off. And really the reason why is because like, I would much rather be wrong, just like very small than, you know, stick with an error and then it just like compounds, gets worse. Then you're watching this position you're underwater on and you can't, you know, take other trades because you're watching your loser. That is so, 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 so important that you have to just, you know, if you're a man, you have to man up. And if you're a woman, you know, you have to woman up and just accept like, hey, this isn't a game of perfection. You know, even if you're like, you know, Steph Curry, look at his field goal percentage. You know, he's like the most prolific three point shooter in the world. I'm pretty sure his three point percentage is maybe like 40%. And that's like incredible. But yeah, he's missing, you know, so many shots that he's taken. So I think as a trader, I think we can get sort of like our minds messed up where like you look at social media and everyone, you know, most people on there, there are like some real ones on there. But for the most part, you have people that are trying to, you know, to be perfectly honest, like people are trying to promote themselves. Like, I definitely have an incentive to promote myself on there because I run a trading community. I try not to be like ridiculous with it though. And like, if anything, I try to like show people the more like realistic side of trading. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they are just trying to show you like, look where I won on this one, look where I won on that one, like, and whatever. And then they make you think that like, oh geez, like everyone's cashing in on this and making tons of money and I'm the only one that's not. And that's, you know, one of like the fallacies essentially of like Fintuit. I think Fintuit's like an amazing resource, but you just have to know like, you are gonna see a lot on there that's not really true. But yeah, so I took two stops on this, took two shots at it on both of these potential breakdowns and then you know once i took those then i was like all right cool what's next like it's actually like a very liberating feeling when you're like i was wrong and like you know nothing bad happened to me like you know i took these minimal losses little paper cuts like we're all good so that's another thing if you're struggling in this market i know what you're probably doing just admit it admit it you're probably making mistakes and you're probably leaving your mistakes in your portfolio and i know what that's like i've done that before so you you make the mistake and then you don't want to admit that you were wrong and you think it might go back the other way so then you just leave it on and then you take another trade and that one turns out to be a mistake and then what do you do then you probably leave that one on too and then you know suddenly you're looking at a portfolio of losers and you're like Pfft. like then you're just like toast then your mental game's all messed up. Then you can't, you know, you're just, you're toast, you're done. And then you have like, you, then you try to make it all back in one trade and then you just blow yourself out. And then, you know, then you're done with your trading career. So the goal here is we, we don't want that to happen. We would rather you just continue, <laughs> continue along on your journey and on your learning experience. And that's really like, you just have to take your stops. Another thing that you can do, like say you're just not good at taking your stops, you know, if you're like, hey, this August month has been very choppy. If you're an options trader, try to trade a little bit more common stock. And also, you know what you can do if you're an options trader, say your typical expert that you buy is like one month out, maybe buy like two or three months out. That way, when you make a mistake, it's a little bit more forgiving. Same thing when you use the common stock, your mistakes are a little bit more forgiving. Then the other thing that you can do is reduce your size in. So if you're like, okay, August, you know, this is the worst month, but I'm addicted to trading. And like, I know I'm not gonna be able to stop trading. So let me just trade a little bit smaller. And then if you make a mistake, like say August doesn't turn out to be your best month, you know, you can go ahead and just be like, oh, okay, I traded so much smaller. So, you know, made a couple errors here and there, but wasn't that big of a deal. But overall, I mean, I think if you are having that issue where you're like, man, like what's going on? Another thing that you can do as well is hug the index. This is something that most active traders I know they never do. But I came like I came up through the mecca of index investing. I, I came up through Vanguard. So I never have any shame in throwing throwing it into an index fund. 
So like if you just find like geez for August super choppy month I don't even want to be messing around with individual names. We got earnings season That's the other thing too when companies report poor earnings, you know, they're being punished So like I know a lot of traders they like try to trade stuff into earnings It's like oh, yeah, I'll buy ahead of the print and then when it goes up, you know, I'll cash in and it's like it's a very it, basically it's a strategy that has no edge you know so you might make it a couple times but essentially just like flipping a coin you know there's nothing in your favor so what you can do is be like you know what i'm gonna put part of my account in spy like i'm gonna put part of my account in the queues or part of it in russell dow jones whatever you know feel free to do that as well it doesn't make you like less of a man or less of a woman yeah, I think where you really struggle is like, you know, if you end up quitting because like you just were too stubborn and then you just like, you know, had an accident or something like that. Like that stuff can happen. It's very scary. So like, yeah, when in doubt, just index it out, reduce your position size, reduce your number of positions, whatever you have to do. Because right now, like the market's just chopping and it's chopping higher. So if you're not, you know, if you're like obliterating yourself right now, you know that's you can't be doing that you know period all right so that's that's that let's go through so now i was trying to make you feel better so i went through my losers but i had some nice trades too so let's let's go through those so i took these i took uh unity off of power earnings gap setup and that uh you know if you're interested in learning more about pegs uh, I have a training video that I built out for pristine capital members. You can also find like if you're looking for that setup, you can go online. There's like a bunch of good YouTube videos on it. So yeah, definitely it's a setup I really like. Um, but yeah, Unity. So this had great earnings, beat estimates, really nice green candle yesterday. And I took this one off of the breach of the high of the day. This one, you know, really clean setup. Pretty much once it pushed through, it just didn't look back all day. And we closed, nice closing range today. Uh, pretty close to the high, so yeah, Unity. That's something where if I don't make the mistake, then I leave it on the books. And then you end up with a portfolio of winners. So, you know, it works out. So I took Unity, and then I also took this Direxion daily small cap bull three times shares. So this is an example of like for me trying to, you know, take care of my own self. Like what, what I've noticed this month is that, you know, my cryptocurrency exposures are absolutely killing it. I have most of my money in crypto, but in terms of like my options trading, it's been a lot lower percentage wise. So I'm trying to like, hey, let me see if I can take this exposure. I don't want to worry about the options, but I trade it instead. You know, this is triple lever. So it's still giving me that extra pop and essentially that extra leverage, but it's not as high octane as trading an options contract. We're like, you know, depending on what you're trading, it goes against you one day and you're already down like 25% on it. And you're like, Bleh, like you're pretty much done. So this, yeah, I bought this on the dip. I got into it for for 87.75 and this closed at like 88.60 so in the money on day one so that is something I will keep on the books so yeah tried shorting the queues but it didn't work out stopped very quickly and then I ended up entering two positions that are so far going pretty well so we'll see what happens but overall yeah my goal like I went over to say in our pre-market webinar, you know, like I'm going to try not to trade a lot, try not to trade a lot. And yeah, I think I did a decent job of that, but yeah, you can always be better. You know, sometimes like if you're like damaging yourself, like, geez, everything I'm doing is wrong. Like do less, do less. If you're missing every trade and you don't normally miss every trade, that's the key. Like, if you find that you're like, geez, my win rate has really come down in August, that doesn't surprise me because it's been very choppy sideways action. But if that's the case, you know, if you plan on trading another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, it's not going to matter if you take two weeks off in August. Like, if you go on a vacation or you go into an index fund for a week or whatever, it's not going to matter. So it's definitely not all life or death. And then real quick, let's just 
do our options race. I don't want to keep you too long. Let's go through this. Boom. Vic Tech options race. And this is brought to you by our sponsor, Vic Tech. No, I'm just kidding. Vic Tech. I do have an affiliate agreement with them. I love Vic Tech. But it's not like they're like sponsoring this video or anything. They are really cool though. Uh, okay, so these are today's combined flows. Tesla entering the lead as always. Uh oh, Amazon overtaking them. What's going on, team? Jeez. Okay, so here we go. So a couple of noteworthy items on this list. So Tesla pretty much like always at the top of the list. Apple is on here. Apple is pushing towards the upper end of a range. And this is really looking good on the weekly chart. So I'll show you this was, I was going over this with uh, some members of our community. Yeah, one of our members was a savage and took this. You know, he took it pretty early today. And yeah, he's already in the money on his trade. I didn't take this one today though, because I took Unity. But yeah, this one follows through tomorrow. I might have to jump on that train too. We'll see. So yeah, this one you know, just looks really good. Looks like a high probability setup. We'll see if it triggers. Uh, upstart. This one also, you know, really nice peg setup. And we're continuing to see call flow. Palantir. Let's pull up Palantir. So I find this so funny, geez, Palantir. So there's like, so I noticed Palantir is like one of the most popular stocks on FinTwit. And Palantir had like a glorious run out of the gate for the IPO. And then it was like everyone on FinTwit got like super bullish, like right here. No, I'm kidding. Not, not right at the top, but honestly, most people, like they were getting hype like around here, I think, like as it made the run. And it was like, oh my gosh, we're all so right on this stock. And then just like, this stock never did anything after for so long. It's kind of funny, like Palantir had a good earnings report. Nice move higher. Yes, yeah, so I guess like, I guess you'd call this a peg setup, but it really didn't have a nice closing range. It's kind of funny, like, you know, with the Palantir investors, like, you know, I feel bad. Like I don't want anybody's investments to just like go sour or like whatever. But like, I don't know, it was just kind of funny. Like there was some people that are like Palantir investors and they were like, oh yeah, we're killing it today, guys. And it's like, literally like, if you're a Palantir bag holder, like you maybe are like closer to getting out from underwater, but like most likely you're still not. So Palantir, I'm gonna start watching it now just to see, you know, maybe it does like a peg setup. But yeah, overall this one, I think it still has some work to do. So I'm gonna set an alert right here. That about does it for this market recap video. Hope you all had a good trading session today and I'll see you all tomorrow and we made it to Friday.